In chemistry, it's important to know how much product you're going to make given the amount of reactant you have to react. And it's important to know how much reactant you need to make the amount of product that you need. Why? It's all about serving the customers. You see, when you're making chemicals, you're usually going to take those chemicals and you're going to sell them to somebody for manufacturing purposes and so on. You're going to get orders placed and those orders are going to require you to make a certain amount of chemical. Now before you know how much chemical you're going to make, you have to know how much ingredients you need to make that chemical. For example, how many cookies are you going to make? You can make a dozen, two dozen, three dozen, four dozen. The number of cookies you make is going to affect the amount of ingredients you're going to need to make those cookies. If you want to make twice as many cookies as the recipe makes, you have to double all the ingredients. If you want to make five times as many cookies as the recipe calls for, you need five times the amount of ingredients. The coefficient in the balanced equation gives you the ratio of reactants you need to make the number of moles of product that the balanced reaction has. For example, we need a 3 to 1 ratio of A to B to make 2 moles of C. If I wanted to make 4 moles of C, I'd need twice as much, 6 of that and 2 of that. If I wanted to make 10 moles of C, I'd need 5 times as much, 15 of that and 5 of that. The ratio set up by the coefficients will always be the same, no matter how you shake things out. For example, how many moles of C are formed when 10 moles of A are completely reacted? Now what that's saying is that we have enough B to get the job done. We want to know how much C we're going to get if we react 10 moles of A. So what you do is you use the coefficients of the balanced equation. 10 is to the 3A as X is to the 2C. 10 is to 3 as X is to 2. 10 is to 3 as X is to 2. So you just solve this algebra problem. 3X equals 10 times 2 is 20. So now we divide both sides by 3. 20 divided by 3 equals 6.67 moles of C. Why three sig figs? Because this has three sig figs. These aren't measurements, so sig figs don't apply to them. When you round your answer off to stoichiometry problems, you're going to use the number of sig figs in your original amount. Here are some more examples of how to solve these kinds of problems. For the reaction N2 plus 3H2 forms 2NH3, how many moles of NH3, we don't know how many moles of NH3, are formed if 6 moles of N2, there's a coefficient of 1 there because there's no coefficient written, are completely reacted with H2, which means we have enough H2 to get the job done. So 6.0 is to 1 as X is to 2. 6 times 2 is 12 equals 1 times x is x. 12 equals x, 12 moles of N2. And this makes sense because it's a 1 to 2 ratio. So whatever N2 is, NH3 is going to be twice as much. 1 to 2, 6 to 12. For the reaction 2H2O forms 2H2 plus O2, how many moles of H2O must be decomposed to form 200 moles of H2? to be used as a fuel. X is to 2 as 200 is to 2. Well, 2 to 2 is a 1 to 1 ratio, so that's simple. 2 and the 2 cancel out, and that gives you X equals 200. 200 moles, right? Because if it's a 1 to 1 ratio, it's a 200 to 200 ratio. For the reaction 2Na plus Cl2 forms 2NaCl, how many moles of Cl2 there's a coefficient of 1 here because there's no coefficient written, are needed to produce 4.0 moles of NaCl. X over 1 equals 4.0 over 2. 4 divided by 2, X equals 2.0 moles. And that makes sense because being a 1 to 2 ratio, whatever sodium chloride is, the chlorine will be half that amount. Half of 4 is 2. For the reaction 3K plus ALNO3 3 forms 3KNO3 plus AL, how many moles of AL 
Now, why am I putting the X over AL and not this AL? Because this is AL, not ALNO33. So I have to put the X over the aluminum. And there's a coefficient of 1 since there's no coefficient written. Will be formed if 10.0 moles of K of K are reactive. So 10.0 is to 3 as X is to 1. So what's 10 divided by 3? 3.33 moles. And that's how many moles. And because it's a 1 to 3 ratio, whatever K is, AL will be one third of that. That's why. Three sig figs because of these three sig figs. For the reaction, methane plus two oxygens forms carbon dioxide plus two waters. How many moles of CO2 will be formed if 50 moles of CH4? Now, since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, you've just solved the problem. 50.0 equals X. 50.0 moles. We got 50 moles of CH4, we're going to have 50 moles of CO2 because they exist in a one-to-one -one ratio in this reaction. And that's how to do basic stoichiometry. If you're given grams, divide by formula mass to get moles, then do this to get moles of whatever it is you're trying to find. If you've got liters, divide by 22.4. If you're in a Regents class, ignore what I just said about the liters and grams. You will not be responsible for it.